NASA and SpaceX are indeed a match made in heaven. The two have been long essential to one another, but the symbiotic relationship appears to be growing and increasingly on display. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson emphasized that NASA is really committed to commercial partnerships, pointing out that SpaceX won a crucial role in the agency's Artemis plan to use Starship to deliver astronauts to the surface of the moon. But in reality, before or Starship, another design SpaceX could change NASA's lunar mission. It's unfortunately been forgotten. However, if you're a die-hard fan of SpaceX, you've probably already guessed the spacecraft that I'm talking about. Indeed, it's the new variant of the Dragon. The Dragon XL, an expendable spacecraft that could supply NASA astronauts around the moon and Earth. What's it going to look like? How powerful is it going to be? And why haven't we heard much about it from SpaceX. All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In March of 2020, NASA announced that it had selected SpaceX to deliver the bulk of pressurized and unpressurized cargo, experiments, and other supplies to the Gateway, which will be assembled in an elliptical or egg-shaped orbit around the moon. It's necessary in order for a crew to live on and operate a proposed Gateway Lunar Space Station for the first several years of its existence. The deal gives SpaceX its first major role in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to land astronauts on the moon. To accomplish that task, SpaceX would develop a heavily modified single-use version of its Dragon 2 spacecraft with more propellant storage, more space for cargo, and a range of other design changes. Although it's going to be called the Dragon XL, this large cargo vehicle looks a lot more like the large Cygnus XL vehicle than the traditional Dragon design. The Dragon XL would weigh around 15 to 16 tons at liftoff and likely require, and will likely require a fully or partially expendable Falcon Heavy launch for each mission to the moon. According to NASA, the equipment delivered by SpaceX's Dragon XL missions could include sample collection materials, spacesuits, and other items astronauts may need on the gateway and on the moon's surface. Surface. The Dragon XL will dock autonomously with the Gateway Station using docking and navigation equipment that flies on the Dragon 2 crew and cargo vehicles. The resupply spacecraft will stay at the Gateway for 6 to 12 months at a time when research payloads inside and outside the cargo vessel could be operated remotely, even when crews are not present. According to SpaceX, it can carry more than 5 metric tons of cargo to the Gateway. At the time, it was a fairly balanced and reasonable choice on NASA's part, leveraging existing investments and experience with SpaceX and Dragon and erecting no major technical hurdles. However, more than two years later, NASA and SpaceX still haven't started work on the contract. That's why NASA's April 1st request for information is so intriguing. NASA began by referencing fine print in the original 2018 Gateway Logistics Services request for proposals that allows the agency to continue receiving and considering new proposals from new and existing providers throughout the program's planned 17-year lifespan. NASA doesn't specify what exactly that means, but in the context of the rest of the text, it appears that the agency wants to use this RFI to help determine whether or not to finally on-ramp its existing Dragon XL contract with SpaceX. However, the document gets far more interesting and suggestive Later, NASA spelled out what exactly it wants respondents to discuss. In a list of eight main questions, the agency repeatedly hints at a desire to substantially expand the scope of GLS. In question number eight, NASA asks if, to help create a vibrant supply chain in deep space, respondents would be able to deliver additional cargo to cislunar orbits and the lunar surface or offer a dedicated delivery tug capability or rapid response delivery service. It seems that NASA is very interested in the potential benefits of alternative deep space cargo transport services that are both cheaper and more capable than Dragon XL. Between the lines, however, the RFI also reads as if it was written directly to SpaceX. The first question is perhaps the most telling. Is your company interested in on-wrapping to the GLS contract to provide logistics services as described in the original solicitation? As far as we know, SpaceX is 
is the only company with an existing GLS contract, which leads me to believe that this is more of a roundabout way to say start work on. In the following questions, NASA then repeatedly expressed interest in cargo transport capabilities well beyond the original contract's requirements and asks about innovative new capabilities that could enable such improvements. NASA even recognizes and hence at a willingness to consider unorthodox solutions that, for example, might require more than one launch per cargo delivery or help minimize upfront costs to the government. Simply put, while it does open the door for just about any US company to inform NASA about new GLS options, it's hard not to conclude that this new RFI is at least partially designed to give SpaceX an opportunity to propose Dragon XL alternatives or upgrades. In the meantime, the most obvious option is Starship. Through the Human Landing System, or HLS program, NASA has already committed to investing at least 3 billion US dollars to develop a crewed Starship moon lander and the fully reusable launch vehicle and refueling infrastructure required to launch and operate it. With barely any modification, the Starship architecture SpaceX and NASA are already developing could be used to deliver dozens of tons of pressurized cargo to cislunar space, lunar orbit, the gateway, the lunar surface, or anywhere else that NASA wants. Leveraging that significant investment would also tick almost every box in NASA's new RFI by drastically reducing upfront and total development costs, helping to stimulate a vibrant deep space supply chain, and beating Dragon XL's cargo capabilities by a factor of 5, 10, or even more than 20. Of course, there are technical challenges and reasons to believe that Starship can't easily replace Dragon XL. Even Dragon XL risked running into Gateway's visiting vehicle mass limit of just 14 tons. Starship would likely weigh at least 100 to 200 tons, more than the entire Gateway itself. Dragon XL would use non-cryogenic propellant and is baselined to spend at least 6 to 12 months at a time at the Gateway. NASA also studied the possibility of using Dragon XL as a crew cabin or bathroom to temporarily relieve Gateway's extremely cramped habitable volume. Starship's main engines use cryogenic propellant that wants nothing more than to warm up and boil into gas, making it far more difficult to keep at the station for months at a time. Those problems are likely solvable, but it's still worth noting that Starship is not a perfect fit right out of the box. The RFI could also end with a whimper if SpaceX simply tells NASA that it's happy to proceed with Dragon XL as proposed. Only time will tell where the cards ultimately fall. And that's about it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Happy New Year!